Welcome to this Story in Focus. My name's Amanda and I'm a volunteer here at the Migration Museum. In terms of the high street, we may all be well aware of the migrant contribution to, for example, Italian cafes and Indian restaurants and Chinese takeaways, but some migration stories are less obvious. Yeah. All of the businesses on this panel were started by migrants, and I'm going to talk about the one in the top left corner, Marks and Spencer. As we all know, Marks and Spencer are a huge global brand. Michael Marks was originally from Sloning in Belarus, which was then part of the Russian Empire. Thomas Spencer was British. Michael Marks was one of two and a half million Jews who left the Baltic states between 1880 and 1920 because of poverty, pogroms and anti-Semitism. Just to give you a bit of background, pogrom is a Russian word which, when directly translated, means to wreak havoc. Pogroms typically describe violence by Russian authorities against Jewish people, particularly officially mandated slaughter though the word has been extended to the massacre of other groups as well. A result of widespread and long-term anti-Semitism, Jewish people became the scapegoat for the misfortunes of others or were blamed for violent or political acts. Pogrom came into frequent use as a term around 1881 after anti-Semitic violence erupted following the assassination of Tsar Alexander II. Anti-Jewish groups claimed the government had approved reprisals against Jews. The first violence broke out in Yelitsevetgrad, Ukraine, and then spread to 30 other towns, including Kyiv. Most of the migrants who came from the Baltic states in this period were from the Russian Pale of Settlement, which was the area within the Russian Empire where Jews were allowed to live. In modern terms, they came from Belarus, Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, Russia, and Ukraine. It would have taken about 10 days for Michael Marx to travel here by land, rail, and sea. The crossing took about five to seven days and the conditions were very poor. Many migrants were seasick and there was virtually no sanitation. They arrived in Hartlepool, Grimsby, or Hull, where they were processed. In Hull, there was an immigrant's waiting room from where many set off to Leeds, which they had heard was a city with many opportunities for migrants. With very little money and poor English, Michael Marks arrived in Britain in about 1882 and headed for Leeds because he had heard that there was a firm there called Baran, which would employ Jews. He began as a peddler, but in 1884, he had a market stall in Leeds Kirkgate Market. At first, he had a range of prices, but he stopped selling expensive products when he saw that it was the penny section that thrived. As the business grew, Marx looked for a business partner. Isaac Dewhurst had loaned money for the original startup costs, but he declined Marx's offer to join the business. Instead, he suggested his senior cashier, Tom Spencer, as a business partner for Michael Marx. Spencer invested £300 in the business. He was skilled in admin and accounts, while Marx dealt with merchandise, selling, and was very good at dealing with people. They started working together in 1894. At first, the stores were called Penny Bazaars and had the slogan, Don't ask the price, it's a penny. Admission was free, and it was permissible to browse without buying. This was unheard of then. By 1900, Marks and Spencer had 36 penny bazaars, including 12 high street stores. Today, Marks and Spencer has 969 stores across the UK. There are some nice visuals of some of the shop fronts in the short film screened as part of this exhibition. I actually have a personal connection with Marks and Spencer because my mother worked in the head office in Baker Street. She was a selector for the company from 1949 to 1961. My mother's family also have a connection with migration because they came here from Austria as refugees in 1938, when my mother was 11. My grandfather was a textile merchant and he set up business in Manchester. I've brought his business card to show you. 
He called the firm Brit Czech because he was Czech. And his nationality was the reason he was able to escape from Nazi-occupied Austria. Although he and his family lived in Austria and my mother was born there, they never took Austrian citizenship. Another reason he managed to get out of Austria with his family was that he was already doing business with Britain. And when he travelled to the UK in the 1930s, his colleagues warned him to get out of Austria because of the persecution of the Jews there. So this exhibition is called Taking Care of Business, but in many ways, business took care of my family. <laughs>